How many of you were at my uh, at our first sessions this morning? It's a handful. So we talked a little bit about um, the new era of distrust and how uh, countries are going to have to supply secure supply chains in ways they didn't have to in the past. And that's one thing we're going to talk about right now. I'd like to introduce Mark Jasmine. He's the Director of Investor Relations at Nouveau Monde Graphite. Mark, thanks so much for coming out today. Give us, first of all, the highlight reel. What are you building and, and why? Because the graphite market doesn't get a lot of attention. I don't think just attention. I think that's about to change because of some of the reasons we discussed this morning. And you're looking to change the supply of graphite from the continent. So give me the 30 second highlight reel overview. What we're building basically is a fully integrated North American anode materials facility, carbon neutral. Never been done before. Today, 100% of spherical graphite used for battery material actually comes from China. And our mission is to break that uh, path and make things happen. All in Quebec, with the fully permitted mine within 150 kilometers of Montreal, full transformation, 150 kilometers northeast, everything supported by clean and cheap hydro provided by Hydro-Quebec. Now, Mark, for anyone who's not familiar with the graphite space, what is the demand side? What is it used for? Graphite is used uh, in our everyday lives. It can be for pencils. We can think about the nose of the space shuttle as an example. It is used in foundries. But more interestingly, it is used by lithium-ion batteries. And uh, just about all of the growth over the next 10 years will come from lithium-ion ba batteries. And to make a very simple sentence, without graphite, you have no anode, which is a negative side of the battery. And without a battery, you don't have an electric vehicle. So basically, graphite today, you cannot go around it to have a lithium ion battery and to go through the electrification of transportation. Can you speak to the supply and, de and demand economics as they are today? Today, we have uh, 363 gigafactories announced worldwide, representing about uh, 8,020 gigawatt hours. Uh, of that, about 1.1 uh, thousand, mil, sorry, 1.1 is from uh, North America, which at a ratio of 1.2 uh, kilograms per kilowatt hour equates to about 1.3 million tons of graphite needed by 2031. If we do look at the current supply curve in North America, uh, flake graphite is about 75,000 tons in 2022, going to 500,000 tons in 2000. So we're talking about a, a 500,000 ton deficit in North America alone for flake graphite by 2030. And in terms of how the world is supplied right now, where does most of this graphite come from? The, actually, if you look at China, they, they are the elephant in the room. They control about uh, two-thirds of the flake graphite. But for anode material, when we talk about spherical um, uncoated graphite, it's about, uh, actually it is 100%. So the material we're going to use for our electric vehicles today is fully controlled by China. And if you are a producer in Canada, uh, Brazil, South Africa, you do need to send the material to China to have it transformed. And it is, it is then brought back to uh, battery plants worldwide. Do you have any thoughts on the security of that supply mark when you think through how new geopolitical battle lines are being drawn and where countries are going to need to source from in the future? I could tell you there's an absolute will in the Western world, United States, Canada and Europe to uh, onshore this production. Uh, it has never been done before. And basically anyone who could offer best cost, green, local supply and IRA compliant uh, graphite, uh, I do believe will be in. So the world is changing and there is a very strong commitment and will uh, of our governments and companies to change it. Uh, we were blessed enough to have a very good deposit, very good hydro and a carbon neutral uh, proposal for our customers. So given that, as you said, it's never been done before, produced graphite being produced on continents, what gives you the confidence that we can compete in that market and find the supply we need? There are two jurisdictions, I would say, in the world, Jay, where you can find resource, low-cost hydro, and labor, which are the three ingredients you need to do it. And one is China, 
and the other is probably Quebec. And Brazil may be a, a close third, but the ingredients we have are in Quebec, should I say in Canada, I don't want to be doing any politics uh, today, <laughs> uh, but the Chinese are not invited to the party in North America, so I do believe we're in a unique position to actually make a difference uh, at Nouveau Mont Graphite. Okay, now walk me through the business model. I know you're forecasting production. Mm -hmm. um, let the audience know where you stand in that cycle. Yeah. We, we took a decision about three years back. The, the key in anode material is actually to get qualified. So what we did, we invested north of $150 million Canadian, 150, into uh, demo pilot plants with the sole purpose to qualify our products with a tier one uh, customer slash off taker. So our mine is fully permitted since the beginning of 2021. Uh, our transformation facility is built. We today have the capacity to uh, build every year or uh, manufacture, should I say, 2,000 tons of coated product for uh, potential customers. But most importantly, all of this is done on commercial scale equipment. Because what is important for a potential off taker is that you're able to demonstrate you can hit quality thresholds with commercial scale equipment and that you're able to manage the risk as we will move forward from a demonstration pilot plant to a full-blown commercial operation. We are currently um, finalizing uh, the details surrounding a, uh, a, a binding definitive offtake with Panasonic Energy, which we've announced in, uh, in October. Our next step would be to finalize the uh, final investment decision, put the financing package together. And afterwards, 28 months later, we would be fully operational with the mine and converting facility, starting with the mine, followed about three months later. If I may add, uh, we also have an option on a deposit that was called La Guerre, which was uh, Mason Graphite's. And Mason Graphite wanted to produce 50,000 tons compared to our 100,000 for 240 years. So we've modified the project for 500,000 tons for 24 years. So if I look at this project, uh, and for which we just released a PEA in January, uh, we would be in production aiming around 2028, 2029. So basically we could increase our production fivefold and actually have the largest graphite, graphite mine in the world by the end of the decade. Now the most important resource for most of these companies on the show floor isn't the mineral on the ground, it's, it's cash. Can you talk to me about your cash position and access to capital? Cash position currently is uh, $60 million. That's a December 31st, non, not yet published. Uh, to build this project, we're going to require approximately $1.4 billion only for the phase, I'm excluding Mason, Canadian dollars, plus probably another $200 million of working cap and debt service coverage ratio um, required sums. The structure we're envisioning is about $800 million of senior debt. We've also applied with the Strategic Innovation Fund of Canada for 30% of the project or $500 million. And for the equity, equity component, which would be about $300 million, we have a um, flagship uh, shareholder, which is Pallinghurst out of the UK, which has a 20% stake and we believe will be keeping it. We have Investissement Quebec, our second largest shareholder, which also uh, will uh, invest in the project. And uh, Mitsui, uh, a large Japanese trading house, actually uh, invested in the private placement in November, a $25 million tranche in US. And we expect, uh, let's call it Japan Inc., Mitsui, Panasonic, and partners to supply the rest of the equity. The wild card would be which sum uh, will the federal government grant us for our project? It is a wild card, and if we were not to get the full 500 million, then we, we may need residual equity uh, from non-private uh, through non-existing shoulders or directly through the market. Now, can you imagine companies like Panasonic ending up in a scenario in the next few years where they have mandates to avoid conflict graphite and are therefore 
forced in, in a positive way to look at domestic supply, to look, think through critically the supply chain. I mean, you look at the disaster within the cobalt supply chain. There's a lot of issues going on there, right? And I think eventually a big spotlight's gonna get shone on those issues. Could you imagine some mandates coming down the pipe that coerce companies like Panasonic to make domestic decisions on where they source their minerals from? Absolutely. The basically customers like Panasonic are looking for three things. Lowest possible cost, green or carbon neutral, and are IRA compliant. And actually, if you look at the Panasonic just from a, uh, a, a carbon neutrality standpoint and their own ESG standards, they wish going there. Um, China has built the supply chain, uh, I must say, based uh, on hydrofluoric um, HF leaching, which is not as green or to, to, to be polite as what we're, we're planning to use in Canada, but definitely Panasonic and other customers want a made in, let's call it the Western world solution with the three criteria as I've mentioned, good cost, carbon neutrality, and IRA compliant. Now, the most important question that every investor wants answered is what's going to happen next? And so you've given us the lay of the land where you stand, supply and demand environments. When it comes to news flow, Mark, what can investors expect near term? The uh, first and foremost is to convert the MOU with Panasonic, Panasonic Energy signed uh, in November into a firm, binding, bankable contract. Uh, which would be a very important and hopefully a very near milestone. Second thing, we need to expand the customer base. Our target number of customers would be three plus or minus one. So you could expect other MOUs with large tier one manufacturers within the next few months, few quarters. This would lead into a final investment decision where basically we'd have the cash lined up to, uh, to basically build our project. Now, a different question for you, just thinking through the fragility of supply chains right now, would you expect any vertical integration in the market? Panasonic right now has an offtake agreement. You know, would it not be in their best interest eventually to look at securing the supply wholeheartedly? Um, for Panasonic specifically, I can bring back maybe uh, six months ago in the market where actually Tesla, Mr. Musk was mentioning he would like to buy uh, mines. There was actually a rumor at one point where he would buy Abermarl. And if you look at the flow of events, then the burden was sort of transferred into Panasonic Energy, which is a supplier to Tesla. So long term, I would say yes, there is a will to be fully integrated, but will it be uh, the car makers definitely that will do so? I'm not convinced. It may be more at the cell makers level, but there is an advantage of being fully integrated in, in North America that is definitely. Now, I want to give you the opportunity for any, any final thoughts. If there's anything you want the audience to leave ingrained in their mind right now, what's the, what's the headline, Mark? The headline is fully integrated, made in North America, carbon neutral supplier of anode material. There's nobody else that has that out there. And more importantly, we have invested the money to build the demo pilot plants to get qualified. So there may be competition, and it will be healthy competition going forward, but a very limited number of them have invested the cash to be a fully integrated vertical in North America. Uh, our closest competition is probably Sierra Resources. They're in Mozambique with their mine, and they have to ship to Louisiana. So no one else is basically all American, carbon neutral, and able to deliver the market in 2025 or 2026. And as I've said, no graphite, no anode, no anode, no battery, no battery, no electric vehicle. Now, if investors want to talk to you more, Mark, do you have a booth on the show floor? Booth 322. Two. Uh, I will be in many one-on-one -on -one meetings today. My CEO will be joining me tonight, but we are fully available to uh, answer any of your questions. So. I want to take the opportunity to thank you as well for attending and thank Jay for being No, here. the pleasure is all mine, Mark. Thanks so much for your time and getting up today and telling the story. And uh, thank you all for coming in.